best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, we did the interview with Nick Patera, um, which came out a few days ago. He has his new crowdfunded book on Zoop, uh, Axe Wielder John. And it launched officially today as I'm recording this video. And it had a target goal of $35,000. And in day one, it's five o'clock as I'm recording this right now, the book uh, has exceeded its goal. So it, it, it made its uh, funding goal in day one. Big hit for Zoop. I think this is, I, I don't know, I haven't been tracking all the things that Zoop has done, but I think this is one of, probably one of their bigger hits that they've had. And that's a, it's, you know, good for Nick, good for the book, good for Zoop. I mean, good for comics because people making independent comics, getting them out there, getting them sold like this, it creates a, uh, an atmosphere where more products can succeed. One of the, by the way, as an aside, one of the more uh, confusing slash sad things about crowdfunding has been some of the weird, um, I don't know what's word, right? Possessiveness or jealousy that's occurred with some of the books that have come out where, you know, people get funny about other people's success. I mean, I'm watching kind of the, the battle that goes on between what was it iconic comics and some of the other people who have been doing crowdfunded books um, independently and watching that, that weird little feud go on between them. It's uh, it, it's sad to watch because if you are a comic creator or producer um, what, uh, you know, was it uh, Common America? What what uh, Iconic Comics has done should make you happy. It should make you excited because what they are showing is that there is a bed of interest to comics. Any retailer will tell you this. Nobody comes and just buys one comic and then calls it a day and stops. Most people, when they buy one comic, will you know enjoy that comic and then go looking for more comics to buy. If one creator has success with a book like uh, Tim Lim has for, for his book, and it's a whole team, so I'm, I'm doing a shit job. Doug Ernst and, and others who have helped build up that, that brand and that, that material, Eric Kennedy with his title, Arcathena. What, what you see going on is that when somebody buys into those books, they're very likely to go and buy another one. So if you're a, you know, somebody who's trying to crowdfund and somebody has success, what you should be thinking in your mind is, how do I get the people who bought into that to come and see me? So how do I, you know, utilize similar tags so I get cross promotion? Or like, how do I jump onto that success and use it to help boost my own? And when I say that's not a bad thing, by the way, I said use it. I don't mean it like use it in a negative, you know, bad way. I mean, use it positively. Use it to help propel. That that is a good thing. And so I, I find a lot of the infighting to be uh, just just kind of sad. It's like it, it's 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 better for everyone when there's more success in comics. Just like it is actually better for DC when Marvel breaks into new markets and find new places to sell books. That shows DC where there's extra money to be made. And unless they're idiots, they go and they follow and do the same thing. It's it's better when there's success in comics. We should be cheering that on. Uh, but but anyway. Um, Axe Wielder John, what was curious about the lead up to that book is I saw people speculating. It's like, ah, oh, this one's going to fail. This one is, uh, this one's not going to work. This is going to be Zoop's first loss. Uh, this is uh, not going to work for them. And the reasons were varied. It's like, ah, this looks like too much, you know, dude bro kind of comic. And, and it just, just a, a lot of a very strange kind of people projecting their own insecurities onto a book. Uh, but what, what's funny, and I said this to Nick, and I should have—I should actually make these predictions more public. I absolutely uh, called it that the book would be funded on day one, and the book would be successful. It was obvious to anyone who went and just looked at the page. I mean, let alone you—you you know, you listen to Nick. Nick was a, is a nice guy. He sounds pleasant. He sounds like somebody you want to support. He sounds like he's excited about his craft. The book sounds compelling. All, all those things. So he did a great job of selling it. But I, I made the prediction it was going to do well before I ever said a single word to Nick because of the way it was pitched, because of the, the, what was out there. You could tell it was going to be a success because he wound up, he, I, whether it was intentional or not, I believe it was, it was probably intentional, but 
he tapped into a handful of things in the, the, the very entry level elevator sales pitch for that book that guaranteed that it would be a success. He tapped into nostalgia because when you look at that, that character and the designs and what was picked, it gave you the perception of He-Man and playing with those action figures and everything else. And it was like, Hey, do you remember, you know, do you, do you remember the nostalgia of playing with He-Man playing with action figures like this? And now imagine if those action figures are going to have a little adventure and there's going to be blood and some gore with it. Some kind of, you know, shocking things there, not gross shocking, but just shocking enough that it's, it's going to give you nostalgia plus a surprise. That combo is absolutely killer. It, it, abs, it, it works every time. If you're able to come out with something like that, it works, you know, play upon something that everybody remembers and loves, give it a slight twist. It's, it's what they used for stranger things and some other shows like that. And it sells, there's a market for it. People are excited. In addition to that, the pitch for the book, and I mean no offense, by the way, to, by, by what I'm about to say, it was brain dead simple. And I mean that as a very good thing. It's when your pitch is, you know, hey, there's a guy and he's wandering around and he's got a hundred axes, like an absurd level of weapons. And he goes out and he, he fights monsters and murders them. Like as stupid, you know, as, as silly and, and kind of shallow as that sounds, it's very easy for people to understand what they're going to get. And that's important. If you're trying to sell a book, if you're trying to sell a concept, you can sell it in one sentence. You know, barbarian guy with a lot of axes kills things, has adventures. By that sentence alone, lots of people are going to, to sign up for it. Now, if you listen to Nick, um, he talked about how, you know, he, he has these uh, skulls and they're special to him. And he goes on this adventure where he can, he, he kind of misleads himself into believing that kind of this, this bloody path of vengeance is what's going to get him to Valhalla or get him to his destination. He, get, he goes into nuance. And, and you know that if you pick up the book and you read it, that you're going to get some of that nuance that's going to come out of the page. And, and you know that you're going to get a deeper story than just, you know, guy runs around with axes murdering things. You, 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 you get that feeling. But the initial hook, the bait on the hook, is very, very simple. And if you're doing a crowdfunded book, if you're doing... Uh, something from the big two, whatever you're, or something from image, you got to make it as absolutely simple as possible that even somebody who's casually not even paying too much attention, but you're reading the first sentence of what this book is all about, gets it. If you can deliver on that, you're, and you can tap into some feeling of nostalgia or romance or whatever, some emotion, fear. There's a couple different kind of core principles you can draw upon. But if you can give that one sentence pitch and tie into that emotion, you're almost guaranteed a hit. And this is proven out time and time and time again. John Wick, it was a very simple premise. You know, guy who is an assassin, is wronged, goes for revenge. It's Keanu Reeves. You remember him from Bill and Ted and kind of, you know, Point Break and some of those films. Well, imagine if... if Bill and Ted. Imagine if, you know, Ted, uh, was it Ted? Uh, imagine if, if Keanu Reeves is older now and just murders the hell out of a bunch of people in a path of revenge. That works. People are like, okay, I remember the nostalgia of Keanu Reeves and I like, uh, it's a simple revenge story. I get it. Go. Ocean's Eleven. Why did that do very well? Simple. It's like, hey, some of your uh, recognizable famous stars in Hollywood band together to pull a heist on a rich douchebag. It works. All the, like the, the simpler the pitch, the more you can make these concepts work for you. And if you think about one of the big failings of, you know, the comic publishers and people who do crowdfunding, it's when you have insecurity about your concept that you start to jack it up with a bunch of other stuff. If you pollute your pitch with all the details and nuance, it may be important to you as a creator, but start to get in the way of that concept. It's going to hurt you. It's going to cost you sales. It's uh, don't you don't want to be too cute. You don't know who's coming to it. This is the thing. When you're going to market or promote your product, 
you have no idea the state of the mind of the person who is you're receiving your marketing or promotion. So you've got to go simple. Every time it's best, go simple, go easy to digest. That's why they call it an elevator pitch. Can you make your case in 30 seconds? For comics, it's, it's actually less than that. Can you make your case in five seconds? It, you, can, you can go down previews and you can read the different uh, solicitations for comics. And you can, with almost complete accuracy, predict what's going to sell well and what's not. If completely ignore your own personal feelings for the creators involved or the, any of the rest. It, throw that all aside. Ignore your feelings for how much you may like a character or a situation. And instead, go for, do I understand, at a core level, what is being pitched to me? Can I pick it up with one quick read of the solicitation? If the answer is yes, the comic's going to do well. Every single time. One of the reasons Batman does so well is because, by and large, they keep it simple. And the stronger Batman arcs are like, like Court of Owls. Batman discovers secret society he didn't know it existed that tortures him and puts him through the ringer. The end. Now, was there more complexity to Court of Owls? Absolutely. You had the, the weird half-brother. You had the talons that were coming back to life. You had the rich society. I mean, Snyder could have absolutely jacked it all up by saying, you know, the privileged of Gotham have a deep, dark secret that may tie into a family history with Bruce. And other you, you can unsell a pitch. But instead, Court of Owls was... Hey, remember Greg Capullo? He was uh, he did that X Force thing and and some stuff over in Spawn, and you like him? Well, he's going to draw Batman, and Batman's going to go up against a shadowy organization, and will he be able to win? Find out. Buy it. That will sell books every time. Uh, the simpler the pitch, the obvious the result. And I think that there's a lot of of really great stuff that's uh, that's emerged that is able to take that and run with it. And Axe Wielder John, yeah, I, I think, again, n absolutely no surprise that that did well. And the fact that it did well, I mean, I'm not saying it had nothing to do with Nick himself. Obviously, you know, the guy behind it, you know, did a good job, sold it well. But that book was destined for success long before Nick opened his mouth at all, because it had a very good, very clean, very simple pitch, one that people wanted to grab onto, and they did. And that's the... That's a clear lesson of the day. There you go. Thanks for listening.